from the Desert Southwest, number one source for local news, Liz Nowicki, Alicia Coates, and Tommy Twan. This is NBC News Channel 11, Sunrise. Welcome back to Sunrise, everyone. Well, the economy may be slow, but one business is certainly booming in the United States. Recently released statistics show that a record number of people are having cosmetic procedures done. And here to tell us why more people are getting nipped, tucked, sculpted as well is Dr. Tina Ulster, one of the nation's leading plastic surgeons. She's director of the Washington Institute of Dermatologic Laser, laser Surgery, and uh, she's also authored numerous textbooks, including one called Skin Savvy, The Essential Guide to Cosmetic Laser Surgery. Thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. Thank you for having me, Liz. All right, so uh, just talk a little bit about why you think more people are getting that cosmetic surgery these days. Well, there are two reasons, really. Number one is that there are so many safe and effective, quick and easy treatments that can be done in an outpatient setting, say in your doctor's office, that can improve lines and wrinkles, the signs of aging, as well as tattoos and scars and birthmarks. But the other reason is because there are so many aging baby boomers that are still out in the workforce that want to put their best face forward. So what are some of the more popular procedures that people are undertaking these days? Well, the most popular ones over the last few years have not been the surgical lifts, nips, and tucks. It has been injectable fillers such as Botox or collagen and Restylane and Radius. These are things used to smooth out lines, to fill in wrinkles, to um, also fill in scars. In general, make the skin look and feel a lot better. Okay, so I feel like these procedures are so commonplace nowadays. I mean, you hear your next door neighbor doing it and the celebrity doing it. So what are the dangers? Because I don't think we talk about that enough. Well, the main thing is that people should go to a board-certified physician, whether that's a dermatologist or plastic surgeon, and also go to somebody who's done a lot of these procedures. Um, you want to have somebody who's had a minimum of 100 of these procedures under his or her belt before you have them operate on you. The other thing is that in terms of my own patients, um, I've always wanted to give them something that was not only safe and effective in the office to do, but something that's comfortable to do. And there are many FDA-approved topical anesthetics like the latest one, Pliagliss, that you can apply to the skin uh, before the treatment, about 20 to 30 minutes, and then people end up doing these treatments and not even feeling it. So you, take, you eliminate the pain factor. Okay, yeah, because that's kind of what I wanted to talk about because we showed some of that video of some of the procedures getting done and they look like they hurt. Like, What kind of pain threshold do you have to have? Well, these days you don't even have to have any pain threshold because there are such products like the Pliagliss I just mentioned. Um, some of these procedures, even without a topical anesthetic, don't hurt that much. I, I say for myself, though, I like to use a topical anesthetic. I think it takes the edge off quite a bit. Okay, so we only have about 30 seconds left, but uh, just a few more suggestions uh, to make sure people really choose that reputable plastic surgeon. Well, number one, again, you want to make sure that that plastic surgeon or dermatologist is board certified. Number two, you want to make sure that the physician treating you has had at least 100 patients under his or her belt uh, that they've treated with this particular procedure. And it's also nice to be able to talk or at least see representative photos of patients that that physician has treated in the past. All right, doctor, thank you so much. Some uh, really good tips. and. Uh you know, just nice to uh, familiarize yourself with something that we hear about so often nowadays. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, uh, let's continue on your health headlines this morning.